what was the you know one of the first ones that we really saw you out in the video was with um the gina and and I, and I remember speaking with her and she spoke about how um she got signed um by you by uh, by the rev and, and, and oh, yourself yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, from your point of view how did that whole you know when you were starting off was because that's was about 96 was almost one of the first ones we yeah, seen. I, was com- I was coming out of high school so it could have been it could have even been before that. It might not have came out to then. Okay. But, you know, you got to remember, like, we were working to build up to even getting a record deal. We had to do demos first. Yeah. Uh, because, like, you know, her her sister sang on my first independent rap gospel album when I was 14. <laughs> Selena. Selena, her sister, sang. So her sister and her sister's husband, they used to go to a church called Bridgeton Tabernacle. And that was a church that my my dad's church fellowship. So I know I used to hear about Gina. I used to hear about Gina could sing, but I never saw her sing. I always it was her sister. Her sister sounded like like um she sounded just like um uh Tremaine Hawkins to me. Okay. So in the church, we I, I used to always like you know be in church listening to singers. I'd be like, she was amazing to me, her sister. And then one day, finally. Somehow, um, um, there was a, a a group called Spirit in um, in the, like the South Jersey area, and it was he was his name was George. I don't know if you ever heard of a kid named Young Steph, but Young Steph's dad, George, was her uncle or cousin or something. I think he might have been her uncle, and he's the one that came to me like, "Yo, I, I want you to hear. I, I got somebody I want you to hear, Gina Thompson." Um, I think it was him that first brought her. Or, or even, or even maybe Kenny Buckman was somebody in yeah, the either yeah. George. I can't remember. It's one of those two, though. And all I remember is when I heard Gene, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is <laughs> this girl is like it's like if 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 I if if I could describe it, it's it for me it was Shirley Murdoch and Coco mixed. Wow, right? Like the inflections and the vibrato and the things that she was doing, and I was just like, man. You know, I didn't really, I was new in the game and it was more so like, yo, okay, let's go. Let's, let's start. We started, we had a production company. Let's sign Gina. Let's do some demos and let's try to get her a deal. And man, we did like, man, we, we did like a few demos and took her to New York. And I don't even think we went to a bunch of record companies, to be honest. I think we might've went to like, we might've went to like Boost Carbone over at Mercury Records, because I had already had a deal with him on one of my rappers. Um, we had a song, my rapper Hodge, called Head Nod, that was on the Black Panther soundtrack. And so it was just more so, hey, like Bruce, that was one of our relationships. Yo, we got this girl you can check out. And so took Gina up there, and Gina, I, you know, she could just sing. She can just flat out sing, she, you know, just incredible. And um, next thing you know, we're in Bass Hit Studios every day making an album. Wow! Uh, in New York, and 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 then you know, I was able to utilize um, Puff Daddy, Diddy, Sean Combs, Love. Yeah. Whatever you call him. <laughs> he wanted to sign me as a producer to the Hitman. Oh goodness! Yeah. So this is before the things you do, the Bad Boy remix, any of that. He heard I was mastering Gina's album at the Hit Factory with her power. Uh, okay. And it just so it just so happened that he he was in a room next door and he heard me working on it through the hall through the wall. And he walked in and said, Yo, what's that? And her was like, Yo, this is his kid and his artist. So he's like, Yo, I'm picking you up tomorrow. So did he he picked me up the next day and literally was trying to get me to sign to become one of the hitmen with Stevie J and Chucky e and everybody on that team. So what I did was utilize that relationship and was like, yo, because at that time, Puff was the remix king in New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, yo, I got this artist. We got this record. What if you did a remix? Da, 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 da. And he was like, I thought he was just going to shoot me down. <laughs> Because, you know, he was working with all these big artists and she was like brand new. She didn't even have an album. We didn't have a song out yet. Uh-huh. And, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. So I'm like, yo, Gina, I got Puff. And then nobody who, nobody knew who Missy was. 
But you know, uh, uh, it, like you had to really be like deep in it to know that like, you and Missy was like part of this girl group that was signed to Devante. Yeah, you know what sister, I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's but she stood out, right? And so next thing you know, Puff was like, "Yo, I'm gonna put this girl Missy on it," and everything just happened. It just like was like, and I, and, you know, it was funny because I remember like it was funny. I go back to like when we were doing. The things you do to the, the the bad boy remix, right? If you if, if in, which was super dope because I remember walking in Puff had three studios, right? <laughs> in the middle, the two the two big studios, and then he had a little small room. And the the little small room in the middle is where he got all his samples from. It was just a record player and speakers. So I walked in, and he was like, "All right, we're gonna work on this remix for Gene." And he was like. He he was like he was playing like records that he thought was hot samples, and I was listening. And I was like, nah. And then he pressed. He went to play one, and then he he stopped himself from playing it. I was like, no no no, play that one. Play that one. And then he he's like, nah nah, I'm saving that for my I'm saving that for for something else. I was like, nah 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 nah, play that puff, play it, play it. <laughs> and it was and it was the boom boom. It was the it was the yes. sample, um, the Bob James sample or whatever, right? And that's I, I was like, nah, we gotta have that one, Puff. We gotta have that one. And I convinced them to give us that that particular breakbeat. And that's and then we went in the studio and we just started laying the keys down and and you know getting it going. And the funny thing is, was like Gina really, if you listen, like she really sings on every song, but then Puff wanted her to like dumb down her voice. So he was just like, I don't want to hear any vibrato. Oh. She was a little frustrated in the beginning when she first was recording because she was like, you know, that that's not how I sing. <laughs> you know, but Puff also, is, he has his genius. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and you respect his genius. And his genius was, you got all the riffs and you got all of that on all the records that Rodney played me, but I want you to just be simple. I want this to be the jam in the clubs where it's like, mm. you know, everybody can sing along. And if you listen to that hook, it's just like, he took he took from the original, he took half of the hook and made it repeat, right? That's what he did. Mm. And, and he made her sing it very just monotone, not a lot of like vibrato at all. I think every time she tried to add vibrato, he's like, no vibrato, every single time. Wow. Every wow. single time. So that's how that came about, man. And it's just like, and and that was a moment. You got to understand, like that was a moment for um, Gina, for for myself, for the whole South Jersey, because Gina was from South Jersey too. Yeah. So Gina was putting South Jersey on the map. You know what I mean? We ain't never had an artist come from South Jersey <laughs> like. That. So and that song was rocking the clubs and radio yeah. out there like nonstop. So you know that was a that was an incredible moment, man. I, I just blessed to even blessed to be able to to just to be able to discover Gina because she was definitely her voice was just just she just she's still just just dope. Yeah, just, but even for Missy too, because that was also that was the the world being introduced to her at the same time because it was something that you know we the her style of rap and stuff and. For all of us, yeah, like, he, 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 how, he, 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 like, who does that, right? Who does that? And that was that character, right? And people, yeah. connect, people connected with that. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching. I'm